In this video, we're going to drive an indifference curve. We're going to start with the consumer's utility function. Utility equals x squared times y. U represents units of satisfaction, consumer's utility. X represents units of good x. Y represents units of good y. In particular, we want to find an indifference curve at u equals 100. Now, consumers have an infinite number of indifference curves. Each indifference curve will be associated with a different level of utility. I'm just choosing one value here of 100. We could have picked any other value, 75, 1,000, 202.1, what have you. So our first step in driving an indifference curve is find the level of utility um, associated with that indifference curve. And again, we're assuming 100, and plug that into the utility function. So we got. 100 equals x squared times y. Let's solve this for y. We get y equals 100 divided by x squared. The next step is just to find various combinations of x and y that give the consumer 100 units of satisfaction. So I'll put a couple columns here, one for x and y. And now I'm just going to pick various values of x. Let's start with 1. If x is 1, plug that 1 into this equation here, we get 100 divided by 1 squared, or 100. In other words, if the consumer could consume 1 unit of good x and 100 units of good y, the consumer would get 100 units of satisfaction. Let's plug in 2 into this equation. Plugging 2 into this equation, we get 100 divided by 2 squared, or 100 divided by 4, and that's just 25. So if the consumer would consume 2 units of good x and 25 units of good y, the consumer once again would be getting exactly 100 units of utility or satisfaction. Let's plug another value in here. Let's try 5. Plugging 5 into this equation, we get 100 divided by 5 squared, or 100 divided by 25, and that's just 4. Okay, So consuming 5 units of x and 4 units of y, given this utility function would give this consumer 100 units of satisfaction. We could test this out. Just take our utility function and plug in these values. So 5 squared times 4. Indeed, that equals 100 units of satisfaction. Now let's plug another value in here. Let's try 10 for x. Plugging 10 into this equation, we're just going to get 1. 100 divided by 100 or 1. I'm going to stop there, but we could continue this. We could have plugged in 6, 7, 8, 12.7. We could have plugged in any value of x and see what the corresponding value of y would be to give this consumer 100 units of satisfaction. The next step is just to take these values and graph them. Okay, You can just take those values and graph them, putting units of good y on the vertical axis, units of good x on the horizontal axis, and just plot these coordinates. I already did that. Let me bring that up right here. So graphing those coordinates that we found, this consumer's indifference curve when utility equals 100 would look something like this. So that's basically how you derive a consumer's indifference curve. I'm going to do a few other things with this utility function that you may be interested in. Um, let me go to a clean slide. So we had this equation that y equals 100 divided by x squared. What I want to do is derive the slope of the consumer's indifference curve when u equals 100. Okay. The way we're going to do that is we're going to take the derivative of this indifference curve, and this is an indifference curve, an equation for an indifference curve that corresponds to 100 units of satisfaction. We take the derivative of that we got the slope of the consumer's indifference curve when u equals 100.
I'm using the quotient rule here. I do have a video that review that re gives a basic review of the rules of differentiation. So if you're unfamiliar with taking derivatives or in particular using the quotient rule, you might want to check that out. And so we get this equation here. Okay, so the slope of the indifference curve, again, when u equals 100, is given by this equation. So what we can do here is we can define the slope of the consumer's indifference curve at a certain point on it. Okay, and let's say we're interested in this point where x equals 5, okay, and when x equals 5, y equals 4, okay, we found that uh, as one of the coordinates on the consumer's indifference curve when utility equals 100. So if I were to evaluate this slope when x equals 5, going to get an answer of minus 1.6. So that's the slope of the consumer's indifference curve when utility equals 100 and we're at this point on the indifference curve when x equals 5 and y equals 4. Okay, now let me do something else here. Let's take this consumer's indifference curve and let's find the marginal rate of substitution find the marginal rate of substitution at x equals 5 and y equals 4. Okay, so the marginal rate of substitution is just the marginal utility of good x divided by the marginal utility of good y. Let's get these marginal utilities. The marginal utility of good x is going to be the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good x. And in this case, we get 2xy. Bring down the 2 in front here, and you're basically done. The marginal utility of good y, given by the partial derivative of the utility function with respect to good y. And here, we just get x squared. Plugging these values into the marginal rate of substitution, 2xy divided by x squared, we're left with 2y divided by x. Okay. Let's now evaluate this marginal rate of substitution when x equals 5 and y equals 4. So the marginal rate of substitution when x equals 5 and y equals 4 gives us 1.6. So notice this. All I'm trying to show you here is that the marginal rate of substitution is nothing more than the absolute value of the slope of the indifference curve. We found the slope of the indifference curve when x equals 5 when utility equal, and y equals 4, that's when utility corresponded to a value of 100. We found that it equaled minus 1.6. We evaluated the marginal rate of substitution at that same coordinate, and we get the same answer, absent the minus sign. Okay, hope you found this video helpful.